this, this isn't this isn't Cora, by the way. Duane is confused as to what color he's wearing. It, it is, is coral. It is pink. It is not pink. It's pink. Look at it. On the camera, it looks pink. I mean, that's what people are going to see. Anyways, guys, Plant Jamaica. Have you been planting? Plant Jamaica is an eco-social enterprise born out of a desire to promote sustainable livelihoods through community farms. And we're going to be speaking with founder Andrew Bruce on Zoom. He's going to be talking to us about the environmental restoration that uh, he's on right now. Hi, Andrew. Good morning. Hi, good morning, everyone. You outside look nice and bright. I love how outside look. look. Foreign. <laughs> I would switch places right now and just hold the show from outside. <laughs> you can do this too. From wherever in, you can do this too. Yeah. Oh yeah, do this often. All yeah. right, so reimagine, recreate, restore. That's the theme for this year's World Environment Day. Um, okay. what, what are we doing? Or what are we not doing as a country um, in playing our part in this restoration project? Well, well we love to blast government every single one of us so let me try and start this on a positive note now we say that covid has kind of you know necessity is the mother of all invention and i'm very pleased to, to see many other people that i would even acknowledge as competitors who are out there selling seedlings and whatnot because now to grow your own food or even just have have plants in your house like they're your pets or your children is now the hip thing so I'm glad to see that there is actually um, a lot more of a push on that. And um, locally, we're eating a lot more fresh vegetables to support our farmers during this COVID period. Government is doing this million tree planting project, which I think is um, excellent. And uh, when I visit a lot of the government nurseries and such, they tell me that they've never put, put out um, fruit tree seedlings like they have put before. So we're planting trees, but it's still not enough. Hmm. Uh, so Andrew, you say it's still not enough. Why is it still not enough, though? Because if we are, if they're, if they're saying that they're doing more, um, why is it, in your opinion, as you have just said, that it's not enough? Well, it's not my opinion. It's a scientific opinion. Okay. We, we may not be the largest polluters in the world, and uh, very, very few people who control a lot of these large companies um, are the main polluters throughout the world, but we still buy the products. We, you know, we still consume the products and that contributes to um, climate change. Um, Jamaica, as I'm sure you've had many people on the show to come and talk about these things, is a small island state. So we have a small amount of land mass, which is not going to help slow storms down. We live in the Caribbean, which is a center, which is a hot spot for, for, for hurricanes, which by the way, we're in the hurricane season now. So please be safe and prepare and do what you need to do. We have a major water crisis um, every single year, at least for people in St. Andrew, they're kind of talking about the, uh, the low level of the, of the Mona Dam. And these are just not easy things to solve. Yeah, and even that to me is, is crazy because we go through a period, well, the rainy season, and it rains almost every single day. And we live on an island and, surrounded by water. And, and by the time we get to <laughs> a certain time of the year, as you said, people in, in, in St. Andrew and Kingston, they don't have no water. Like, what, what, what is it that we're missing that, that we're, we're, we're not connected to? Because something is amiss if this keeps happening. Yeah, well, that's, an, that's, that, that's for another segment with, um, <laughs> with, with people who are experts more than me. But I do practice rainwater harvesting. It's a service that my company mm -hmm. offers to be able to harvest your own way of rainwater. There's other companies out there. You know, I do a lot of consulting. So even if it's about selling somebody else's product out there, um, I will recommend many of the people out there who have products that help you save water in your house. Uh, but rainwater harvesting is primarily one of the things that, that I get my hands messy, messy on. So um, with development taking place, there's a whole lot of a, a lot more apartments and high-rise buildings going on, and I'm not quite sure how we're greening, King, add, adding any more greenery to Kingston or um, putting less demand on the system. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, and, and that's what I wanted to ask you next. Um, with all these high-rise buildings going up, apartments here, apartments there, and the space is overcrowded with just buildings. Um, how and when will we? understand that if you keep putting up buildings, as you said, it's going to take away from the, the greenery of the area. 
How do you can answer that question, sir. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's tough, though. It, it's tough to see. Yes. But, you know, everybody wants to make a living, right? Everybody wants to make money. Real estate is an excellent game to be in. Um, so, um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a tough question. What I, you know, you know, Andrew, I've come to and, and I have this amazing this amazing show called Farm Chicks that I that I have online. Ooh, ooh. And um, mm -hmm. I, I yeah, it, it came out of an interest for greater awareness about the importance of farming, but also about how we consume the food that we eat and the knowledge about where this food is coming from and the nutritional yes. value of the food that we do eat and I, I did it because I have a young son who is four. And so right. for me, giving him the food that I know where it's being planted and how it's, you know, farmed, etc., is important to me. Um, the backyard farming, I want to zone in on that and the importance of eating what you grow. Because if you have a, like, I have a liking for sweet potatoes. And so I've, you know, I've now planted sweet potatoes in my backyard. Um, you know, let's talk about the importance. Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about the importance. This is kind of reinforce the importance of persons who are watching and may not be so convinced about farming because they, they think, it, oh, it's dirty work. It's too much work, <laughs> you know. Um, let's talk about what you offer. And, and that whole picture of eating what you grow. Okay. Well, big up Farm Chicks. I just discovered you. you guys this week on YouTube. Salute. Hey, thank you. <laughs> we need to collaborate. Yes, we're going to talk. <laughs> um, backyard farming. Yeah, as we said, there's been a big boost since the whole COVID period. Um, I happen to be in a townhouse that has a little bit more backyard space than most. So it is a challenge dependent on where you live. Um, Uh, container gardening is the way to go um, if you're limited on space. I mean, it even also helps you on, on, on all of your controls. Um, uh, I mean, there's a million one things that you guys can grow, right? Yeah. I mean, I sell all I sell all the seedlings. I sell something which are hardy. Uh, I consult on t teaching people um, how to go about it, even if they want to take a do-it-yourself approach. Because everybody's going on YouTube. No disrespect to farm chicks at all. This does not. This is not necessarily <laughs> referred to you, but we're getting a lot of knowledge from North America on YouTube. And that is a different climate. It is yeah. not tropical mm. soils. Mm. Exactly. Um, and, um, you know, I love going through the parish of St. Elizabeth and I see that people are making use of every square inch of the land. And I wish that we all had the same amount of parcels of land that those folks seem to have. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, Plant Jamaica has, uh, has, has pretty much all the solutions to be able to tell you how to do this. I've been doing this for uh, six or seven years now, started in the inner city, uh, um, consulted and helped out with, uh, agent Saska's, um, house. He has an Instagram page, backyard to kitchen. Yeah. So I meet the Mitchells with my friend Wayne and Tammy and the, the family, um, there's some other people out there. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention their names, but big stars. And I put in, <laughs> um, I put in herb and kitchen gardens for all of these, uh, for all of them. Nice. And the nice. nice thing about it is that anybody can start. So even if you have a balcony, you know, and you could hold hold one pot for one plant. You ever don't know how to grow something? It's something to do. We all we we all we all need some form of entertainment and 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 to do something in a way that is healthy for our minds it's gives us nourishment it gives us anything that's just therapeutic whatever's good for you you know we need some balance in this life absolutely yeah, yeah. absolutely love that um post covid do you think it continues the backyard farming <laughs> you know i hope so um there are certainly the evidence is there that people have fallen in love with it yeah what we want is i want to see more people moving from backyard farming to more large-scale agriculture mm -hmm. because our food import bill is still mm. crazy high even though even though the tourism sector isn't up to its full capacity right um so we need more local farmers we need more help from the government we need more help from the private sector to um kind of streamline a lot of the, these industries so that if you do grow something um, you're able to get the right knowledge to be able to grow it well, grow it responsibly in a way that is good for the environment, hopefully. Um, that's, my, that's, that's my aim. 
and then find a market for it. Because mm -hmm. so you have a lot of people who grow and then they say that they can't find the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's very true. Gotcha. All right. So thank you so much, Andrew. Um, please continue. Most welcome. Continue the good work and we'll be doing our part by planting one tree at a time because it's the start to rebuild and restore our environment. That was Andrew Bruce, founder of Plant in Jamaica. The tree you plant you, today Andrew. is for the children of the future. We'll be right back.